The Supreme Court says it will take up a new challenge to the health care law and decide if it is legal for millions of low to middle income Americans to receive subsidies. Good evening, I'm Judy Woodruff. Also ahead, President Obama meets congressional leaders at the White House to chart the course ahead. Then Detroit gets the green light for its grand bargain to emerge from the largest municipal bankruptcy in U.S. history. A breakthrough in military medicine that could save injured soldiers from bleeding to death on the battlefield. We literally went to William Sonoma, bought compressed sponges out of a kitchen store, loaded them in homemade syringes that we made, uh, and put them in a model, and they expanded and worked. And it's Friday. Mark Shields and David Brooks are here to analyze the week's news. Those are some of the stories we're covering on tonight's PBS NewsHour. The U.S. economy created another 214,000 jobs last month. That makes nine straight months that employers have added more than 200,000 positions, the longest stretch since 1995. And the October unemployment rate fell to 5.9 percent, the lowest in six years. President Obama welcomed the news today at a cabinet meeting. All this is a testament to the hard work and resilience of the American people. Uh, they have uh, been steady and strong, digging themselves out of the worst economic crisis uh, since the Great Depression. And what we need now to do is make sure that we build on this momentum. The president also acknowledged that many Americans still aren't feeling the recovery, a factor that played heavily in Tuesday's election wins by Republicans. We'll return to the economy as Paul Salmon reports on part-time workers later in the program. Reports swirl today that the president will name the U.S. attorney in Brooklyn, New York, to be the next attorney general, Loretta Lynch. Several news organizations said Lynch is the choice to replace Eric Holder, who is stepping down after six years in the post. The White House said the president has not yet made a decision. The U.S. Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Robert McDonald, is ready to announce a sweeping shakeup. In a CBS News 60 Minutes interview airing Sunday, McDonald says he will dismiss or demote up to 1,000 staffers. It's a response to this year's scandal over inadequate treatment and long wait times in the VA medical system. The president has authorized 1,500 more non-combat troops to go to Iraq doubling the number already there. The Pentagon said today that some of the teams will move into Anbar province to help train Iraqis fighting Islamic State militants there. A spokesman denied that the election outcome influenced the announcement. Instead, he said the overall U.S. commander, General Martin Dempsey, and the regional commander recommended the move. There was no... Um, uh, political angle to the timing here. It was really driven by a request from the government of Iraq and General Austin's assessment uh, about having th this being the right thing to do. And I would add that, that that was an assessment supported by not only Chairman Dempsey, but of course the Secretary, who formally made this recommendation to the President, uh, that this was not only the right thing to do, but it was the right time to do it, where, based on where we are in the campaign. The president is also asking Congress to authorize $5.6 billion to fund the effort. The last person to come in contact with Ebola patients in the U.S. came off monitoring today. They had been around a Liberian man who died of Ebola in a, in a Dallas hospital, or one of two nurses there who contracted Ebola and were later cured. An American doctor who caught Ebola in West Africa remains hospitalized in New York but is improving. The Japanese airbag maker Takata now faces accusations that it hid a deadly defect going back a decade. The New York Times reports that former employees at Takata secretly conducted tests on 50 ruptured airbags in 2004, but were ordered to delete the data. Four deaths and 30 injuries have been linked to the defective airbags, and automakers have now recalled 14 million vehicles. Japanese authorities have approved restarting a nuclear power plant under new safety rules for the first time since 2011. Nearly all of Japan's 48 working reactors were taken offline after an earthquake and tsunami destroyed the Fukushima Daiichi plant. With today's announcement, two reactors at a plant in southern Japan are expected to go back online early next year. 
Ukraine charged today that Russia has sent major new military forces across the border to help pro-Russian rebels. That came amid continued fighting around the separatist strongholds of Luhansk and Donetsk. Ukraine's national security spokesman spoke in Kiev. Supplies of military equipment and enemy fighters from the Russian Federation to the anti-terrorist operation zone are continuing. In particular yesterday, the movement of military equipment, 32 tanks, 16 howitzer artillery systems and 30 trucks carrying ammunition and fighters was reported. Russia has routinely denied allegations that it's helping the rebels or that it has any forces inside Ukraine. An art installation lit up the city of Berlin tonight as Germany marks the 25 years since the fall of the Berlin Wall. Helium-filled light balloons stretch nine miles and trace the exact path the wall took, dividing east from west during the Cold War. The balloons carry messages and they'll be released into the air on Sunday, the actual anniversary. Back in this country, the U.S. Senate race in Virginia was finally decided today. Republican Ed Gillespie conceded to Democratic incumbent Mark Warner, who led by just over 16,000 votes out of more than 2 million cast. That gives Republicans at least 52 seats in the new Senate to 44 for the Democrats, with two independents. Races in Alaska and Louisiana are yet to be decided and could give the GOP two more seats. On Wall Street, stocks failed to get much of a boost out of the jobs report. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 19 points to close near 17,574. The Nasdaq fell about six points to close at 46.32. And the S&P added just a fraction to finish near 2032. For the week, the Dow gained 1 percent. The S&P was up more than a half a percent. The Nasdaq was virtually unchanged. Still to come on the news hour, the Supreme Court takes up a new challenge to the Affordable Care Act. President Obama meets with congressional leaders to plot next steps. Why some part-time workers are counted as full-timers by the government. Detroit gets the green light for its grand bargain to emerge from bankruptcy. A new invention that can save soldiers' lives on the battlefield. And Mark Shields and David Brooks on the week's news. The Supreme Court announced today that it would take up a controversial case that could have major implications for the health care law. And after the court had decided not to take up same-sex marriage, the hot-button issue could very well land before the nine justices after all because of a decision yesterday in a lower court. Here to explain more is Marsha Coyle of the National Law Journal. Welcome back. Thanks, Judy. Always good to have you. So, Marsha, what prompted the justices to take up this challenge to the health care law? Another one. Well, usually the, the court waits for a disagreement in the lower federal appellate courts before it, it takes a case. That's one of the criteria for review. Uh, technically, there there is no division right now, but the court will also step in if uh, the issue is of national, national importance or uh, it's an issue that could likely recur. And certainly there are other cases pending that are challenging this particular provision in the Affordable Care Act. So what do you think prompted this? I mean, the assumption is that the four more conservative justices who were not on board with the 2012 ruling that upheld most of the Affordable Care Act were behind this. What, what's the thinking? <laughs> well, we really don't know the votes, who voted how to take a uh, review of the, this particular case. We do know that you only need four votes, and the speculation is that at least among whoever did vote, there were the four dissenters, and perhaps uh, they wanted another uh, shot at the Affordable Care Act. What could this, I mean, this, this, what this is all about is the authorization for tax subsidies yes. for low and middle income folks. Right. Uh, and it has to do with uh, state, uh, the state exchanges. And the question is whether the uh, Obama administration truly had the authorization uh, to set up the, the federal exchanges, to allow these subsidies under the federal exchange. 
the first challenge to the Affordable Care Act was a constitutional challenge, if you remember, to uh, the individual requirement that you have health insurance or pay a tax penalty. This is a very different type of challenge. This is going to involve interpretation of the language in a particular provision of the Act, which says that subsidies can be paid to certain individuals if they buy their health insurance on, and this is on exchanges, the exact language, exchanges established by the 